I'm going to uh, put a new edge on this saw. Uh, uh, um, sharpening a saw is such an important thing, and my wife has asked me several times to do it because um, you know I hear a saw running, and quite often, if it's not a cutter, it's dull. And you know, I, I guess I just I you can hear that, and it's almost painful. And uh, so yeah, here, here goes. I mean, most of you guys, you know, you might be cutters, and uh, uh, so I don't. I'm not trying to you know, <laughs> act like I know everything, but <laughs> you know, a sharp saw is a, a true thing of beauty. So I just want to think. It might, maybe I could help somebody out a little bit. You know, if if, if you're not a pro, you know, um, it's a, this is a 372 Husky, and uh, I think this is the maybe the third one, there was a point here a while ago where I was doing quite a lot of falling. Um, and uh, this is a beautiful saw, I think. I, um, you know, it, uh, it's plenty of power, it's light. Um, I run a 32 on it, that's really, you know, in today's wood, you know, really, I, I feel that is all you need. Um, and, uh, um, but these are just really good saws, I think. And, you know, I don't mean to, you know, I mean, stills are great saws too. And I just started out, actually, the first saw I bought was a John's Red back when I was a kid. I borrowed money to buy it and uh, then I uh, switched up to Husqvarna's fairly quickly thereafter. And I've run steels. You know, they just, they feel different. And, you know, they're great saws. I think you know, they're probably more popular, you know, than... Huskies, but uh, they just feel kind of funny to me. I'm just used to them. So anyhow, whatever. And uh, I deal with Madsons. I um, used to deal with them more when I was doing more cutting um, up there in Chehalis. They are a great outfit. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of mail order. We'll give you a link, you know, if you don't know about them. They're just super people. And, uh, you know, you want a part for saw. When I was cutting a lot, I'd try to figure out something really difficult to see if they'd have it, you know, and I never had them say, you know, oh, we don't, we have to order that for you. It's more like, how many do you want? So, uh, anyhow, um, uh, I run Oregon chain and I run full comp. A lot of guys, I know you get into a longer bar, you know, you might go to a full skip or, you know, semi skip, but I run full comp and, uh, um, I file, my chains and you know um, that's just how I did it um, since like when I got gone um, you know when I ran a shorter bar even back long ago um, in smaller wood but um, you know a lot of guys you know grind their chains and my hat's off to you because they, you know if you're good at it you can put a hell of an edge on it but it's pretty uh, it takes it's there's a learning curve to it and uh, uh, this works well for me, especially now I'm not cutting much. Um, so, uh, anyhow, I file it with a round file even, you know, and uh, probably some people are uh, <laughs> swearing at me right now for that. But that's just how I learned. Um, and, you know, a sharp saw is a true thing of beauty, you know, as you guys know. Um, and um, I don't like a hungry chain. Um, but I like to hold a saw back slightly. You know, that's when you gotta, uh, you know, she's cutting right when you have to hold it back and just let that power go and you, you're cutting wood. So that's what I like. Um, I, I took this out today. I had a couple, uh, you know, it was five sticks to unhook here in town. Um, two of them were pretty good size and actually I had to jack them. Um, Add some lean and uh, uh, actually, I cut in the pocket out for the jack. I actually, uh, um, I touched the, uh, the top of the Sylvie, which is aluminum, and you always uh, appreciate that it's aluminum when you do that. Um, but uh, anyhow, uh, so I'm gonna put an edge on it. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll uh, load it up in the vise and uh, and maybe get started and uh. Um, just talk about it a little bit. Uh, again, I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it, but it gives me good performance. And uh, 
Um, there's nothing mysterious to that sharpen a chainsaw. Um, I, and I just encourage you, you know, if, if you if you really aren't, you know, confident about sharpening it, a, ch a saw, um, you know, talk to somebody maybe who, uh, you know, is competent and get some pointers and then you just do it. And then you try to cut something with it. Is it sharp or not? You know, and if it's not, you know, you do it again. And once you get it, you know, you're just good to go. It's really simple. So, uh. Yeah, okay, I'll, uh, I think that's it, really. I'll uh, load it up into the vise, and away we'll go. There are a couple more things I wanted to mention before I threw this in the vise and get get going on it. And um, one of the things is um, I mentioned about full comp chain, and, and that's what I run here. And what that means is there's a, you know, there's a tooth separated by a tie strap, you know, uh, for the, the full length of the chain. So there's a left hand cutter, then a right hand, then a left and a right. Um, so, uh, you know, in a semi skip or a full skip, you start taking cutters out, you know, and on a really long bar, uh, the purpose of that is that, you know, you don't really sacrifice cutting performance um, and there's less sharpening to do. So that's one thing there. Another thing I like about the full comp chain is that there's this gap right here that you can see, you know, versus right here. And that's because when you made this uh, this chain for a 32 inch bar, that's where the next tooth would be. But now it's a gap. So I use that gap as a gauge as I'm sharpening because it may not be dull. It may you just may just be putting that razor edge back on it. And you need to, you can't, so you can't see the difference in a sharp or a dull uh, <coughs> cutter. And so having a gap there is kind of fun, you know, to have. It just makes it easy to look for that. Um, another thing that's critical, and this is critical for sharpening, but it's also for performance in my estimation, is the correct tension on your bar. And for me, and everybody farms different, so, you know, this is just what I've done. It, the correct tension is when you pick it up kind of in the center of the bar and lift it up, the drivers will just clear the top of the rails. And um, you aren't picking the saw up, um, it, and there you go. It just kind of, the, the saw, the engine comes off slightly, and you're just clear. But that's pretty stiff, you know. You may be surprised by that. Um, that's really important for bar wear, <clears throat> for cutting performance, and for sharpening. If your chain is really loose, you're not going to, it's not, the cutter won't stay, you know, solid for you, and it's kind of wobble around, and, you know, if the cutter can come out differently. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then <clears throat> to uh, finish out, I think one mistake a lot of people make, and I, I hope you can see this, um, on these, you know, left and right cutters, this, uh, the file mark is fairly similar, you know, and I'm hand filing it, so when I, I say similar, that's what it is. But I think one mistake people make is when they're filing, they're pushing down on the cutter and with the file. And really what you want to do is you push against the cutter, so it's that way, not that way. And because if you get too deep on that, <clears throat> you put too much of a gullet on it, and you're, you're the, the top of this rounded top of the file is moving away from the top plate of the cutter. And that's a very important cutting edge there. So if you move away from that, you aren't going to put an edge on that the way you want. Um, that also makes for a very aggressive chain. And uh, I don't like a hungry chain, as I said before. So anyhow, a couple things there for you. So let's put it in the vise and put an edge on it. Okay, so I personally think the only way to sharpen saw is in a vise, but People have some pretty amazing techniques they use to do it, and I've seen them. I had a guy work for me one time. They would kind of, you know, crouch over it, put it in between his knees, and kind of crouch down over it. And that held well, and he was good at it, and a good cutter. And, but I think this is the way to do it, and I'm an old guy, so I need my glasses <laughs> and uh, um, a sharp file. 
you know i mean these don't cost all that much and what you're doing is making tool run right so if it's dull um start off with a new one so like i said i um i know i was cutting today i uh just barely caught um the jack there and uh took a little point off this uh right hand cutter so I'm going to start sharpening that one because that, that really is the one that um, has an issue. And I'll see how many strokes you need to, to uh, straighten that out. <laughs> and um, then I'll apply that to the other side. You want it to be same, same. And um, you want to maintain the, the same pressure, which is more difficult. For me, I, I notice it's more difficult uh, than you'd think because I've got kind of a strong side and weak side. Um, so, uh, anyhow, this might be a good place to say that, um, you know, long ago I ran Carlton chain. I, I think they're out of business, but that was good chain in its day. And they had this thing called a Carlton file plate, which is a little piece of, uh, I think it was 304 stainless that fit down over a cutter. It sat, at the correct angle up and it had the angle of the cutter um was the you know was what the, the, the little file plate had that cut into one end and i used that for quite a bit um and that kind of gave me the template so i don't use i don't have it anymore i don't use it um and i can maintain what um you know the proper angle and uh, depth um, just by eye. So, you know, if you come across one of those, that is a really handy tool. Carlton file plate. Okay, so here we go. So this is my, my junction that I'm going to look for when I come around. And uh, so you just hold the chain you, uh, or hold the file, both hands. Um, these are, sh or these should be really sharp and they will cut you bad. And, you know, if you're when I'm, cutting a lot you know my, i get kind of cut up regularly because they should be razor sharp and, and they'll cut you so be careful hold on to your file with both hands um you want good light you want to be able to see and uh there we go so okay so what i'm doing is i'm i'm watching the angle of the cutter this way and I'm watching the angle because it's a slight up angle and I don't know what that is I'm sure that you can find out what that is but I know about what's right so I gave it three strokes and that looks like that you know tightened up the uh, or cleaned up the you know the little neck on the point and uh, so I'm going to apply that all the way around Actually, that's four, and that. So again, you know, you're, you're putting pressure back like that. You're kind of pushing back against the cutter, not down. Okay, that's very important. And on and on goes. <laughs> um, this is what I call my strong side. For some reason, it's just easier, you know, or something. So I'm doing four strokes on this side. <laughs> and the left-hand side, I'll probably do like five or possibly even six because that's my weak side. So you want to have them even. 
And so I compensate, you know, by, by doing it that way, you know. back to that gap so that's one side down so you know there's really not much you know doesn't take long and uh there we go so now i'm gonna pull it out of the vise turn it around and catch the other side There's my junction, and maybe it shows up here, you know, now see I've sharpened this, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's fairly, you know, so this is shorter than this cutter here, um, but like I was saying, this is my strong side, this is my weak side, you know, so that's why, uh, you know, I'm going to give this some more, you know, to, to bring it down, because you want them cutting even, you know, that's, that's super important, so... I'm going to start with six strokes on this. There we go. The last step in sharpening the chain um, is with your rakers. And so the raker, you know, is this piece <laughs> right in front of your the cutter itself. And that controls the depth that the cutter takes out of the wood. So when I was cutting today, <laughs> um, when I started, it was the chain was what I'd call hungry. And I don't like that. It's too aggressive. Um, and so when I'd sharpened it, I dropped the rakers <coughs> and the rake, so I, I dropped them a little bit too much. So it was allowing the, the cutter to take too deep a curve. And so that is a hungry chain. And, you know, the saw has plenty of power and it was cutting for, it worked good, but I'm pretty particular. So with all that being said, <coughs> even though, the chain got slightly dulled. Um, I'm not going to take the rakers down at, at this point because it was hungry, to, you know, on the previous uh, sharpening, if that makes sense. So to me, like I said before, a perfectly cutting saw, you'll need to kind of hold it back, you know, and you can cut, you can dog up against it and, pull into it and she'll cut she won't bind you know or, you know because it's too hungry it'll just cut like lightning you know so that's what you're looking for so and that's what this will do uh, next time i use it so anyhow i hope that's helpful um it's worth just trying you know and like if this is where it's your saw you should just like cut something and it's like wow is that thing cutting like the wind or what you know or is it, damn, that thing's still dull, you know? And then bring it back, try it again, you know? Um, you know, just watch your angles, watch the depth of your gullet, and uh, keep at it, you know? Is it cutting straight? If it isn't, you've got either a long cutter on one side 
or one tooth is dull, or you might have a, a, a worn bar. But, uh, you know, just uh, keep at it and uh, find the technique so that it's really cutting well. And it's a thing of beauty. All right. Well, hope that was helpful. Thanks a lot.